Hi, I'm Bill Lindsay from Sense Labs, and I'm here today to talk about seven reasons why pen tablets are better to use than a mouse. Using a pen on the computer instead of this guy. And we'll talk about that. Let's take a look. Let's jump right in. Reverse order. I'm going to start with number seven. Tablet to display ratio. A lot of people ask, what does that even mean? Um, you may remember back in the day, there was the square, almost square displays. Those were a four by three aspect ratio. Well, when computer screens started to get, become widescreen, there was kind of two camps. There was 16 by nine and 16 by 10. And there were about 50, 50 displays were in both camps. And so what happened was when a lot of tablet manufacturers started out, some of the, well, one of the more well-known ones went to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio camp. And that's where they have been the entire time. So what does that mean when I'm using all my, all the computer screens now, or almost all the computer screens now are 16 by nine. So what does that mean for a tablet that's 16 by 10? Well, I, as an example, you'll see my, my computer screen here going on. If I take a round object, I've got this round object here. Let's turn around so you can read it. I've got a round object here. And if I wanted to take this and put this onto my tablet, which is a 16 by nine tablet, by the way, you can see it up on screen there. And if I were to use Photoshop and trace around this tablet using my pen to draw a perfect circle, what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get a perfect circle on a 16 by nine aspect ratio for my tablet. If I had a 16 by 10 tablet, that circle is gonna turn into an oval. So that's why it is kind of important. A mouse uses what's called relative motion. And so that is actually even worse to try to draw with. And we'll talk a little bit about more when we get into the, the one of the other categories down, down below here. So if you take a look at this on screen, you'll see um, how a, a 16 by nine aspect ratio matches a 16 by nine display and tablet. That's really kind of where you want to be. That's going to give you that one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So the exact stroke you draw is the exact stroke you get. Number six, no charging necessary. Who has one of these devices? The Apple Pencil. Never fails. Murphy's Law. You're going to get right in the middle of a, a big deal or a big project, working on a very important photograph and your pen will need to be recharged. There are other pens out there that also require batteries. And our pen does not. Our pen is actually powered by the tablet itself and that's where it gets its juice. And so it does not need a battery. There's no battery in there for it to die in the middle of a project. Number five. Ah, speed, save time. Of course, that means more money, right? Time is money. Well, let's take a look at how some of those things can actually be beneficial. All right, let's talk about how speed actually works. So um, if I'm using a mouse and my cursor was down by my layer palette, and I wanted to go all the way over to my tools, I've got to scroll through real quick and try to move my mouse and do that old, you know, carpal tunnel thing, repetitive motion thing, right? Well. Because I'm using a pen, and you can see on camera there, I've got the pen up here. If my cursor is over here by my layer palette, notice where my hand is in the pen on my tablet. It's down the lower right-hand corner, right where the cursor is. If I were to go up by the menu, um, I'll just say I want to go to the file menu. I'm just going to point to that area on my tablet. And you can see I'm right up here under Photoshop and file right there. So I can go instantly to whatever area I want to access using a pen. It's a much faster way to work. So as an example, um, if I'm back over here in my layer palette, and I wanted to go to my tool palette, I point to that area of my tablet and I'm right there with my tools are. I just pick up my pen, my hand and move to that spot and I'm instantly there. So it does make a huge difference when I'm trying to do things um, and moving around on screen, it's much, much faster. Yes, there's a learning curve. I've seen people do it in 20 minutes. I've seen some people do it in two hours. That's probably about the average. And I've seen some people do it in two days. Um, I had a friend actually mail himself his mouse, stuck it in the mail so he didn't have to worry about accidentally doing it and being frustrated because that's what happens. You cursor maybe is over here at the layer palette and I'm used to using a mouse or my trackpad and I want to go to the tool palette. I do this motion where I'm trying to scoot it over there like I would be using a mouse. 
That's not the way it works. Notice I'm also not even physically touching the tablet. I'm hovering above it. And that's how I'm actually able to control it by navigating around. My hand's resting on it. So my hand is gliding around on it. Matter of fact, one of the cool things is this nice ridge here slopes down. As my hand gets toward the edge, my it just naturally feels really nice to be able to work long hours on this type of tablet because I can actually, my hand slides right down in a very comfortable position. So we designed it that way on purpose. But you can see, I just point to the area I wanna to go to in order to be able to get there. Again, I'm not physically touching the pen tip and the tablet together. I'm actually just going ahead and sliding around and covering, uh, navigating by using this capability. When I wanna do something like tap on a tool, that's when I physically tap the pen tip to the actual tablet itself. That's the same thing as say a mouse click, that'd be the same exact thing as a tap. If I go up to menu, I can very easily tap on a menu, hold it down, I'm holding the pin down on the tablet, and you can see I get access to all my menus. Even, even maybe some sub menus, I can slip over here and grab something off there as well very easily too. So it's really just a matter of understanding how that actually navigates and how your brain needs to understand that. There's a, again, like I said, a little bit of learning curve, but it's really not bad. And once your brain understands that capability, you can pick up a mouse, you can pick up a pen, and you'll actually be, be able to move and your brain will know what to do. So it's a very quick way to be able to do that. So this gives you the ability to be able to move really, really fast. Number four, have you ever tried signing your name with a mouse? Yeah, uh, signing your name with a bar of soap on a rope, that's not a fun experience at all. And maybe some of you do. Maybe you want to create some artwork here. I'll show you a little bit about that. Let's say we draw some artwork out and we now want to sign our name to it. Well, that's where we get the ability to be able to use a pen to be able to draw our name out. Just sign very quick and easily. And it's a natural media device, something we're normally used to using. Here's a little trick for you. Um, sometimes I'll take a, a picture and I'll look at it. And a lot of times I'll do it with clouds when I take photos of clouds, but I will sometimes try a um, auto levels. Matter of fact, I've got that programmed in here on my auto levels real quick. And I'll press auto levels. It's either on the Mac, it's command shift L or on the window side, it is control shift L. And what that does is that may affect an image or it may not. Um, that's kind of one of the cool things is you can just test it out and see what happens. If I wanted to say sign, my nice photograph here. I mean, how hard is that to do using a mouse? It's impossible. Um, although I do know of some people that actually have been able to figure it out. I don't think I'd want to be one of those people. So let's say I wanted to sign my photograph here. I'm just going to go ahead and add a new layer. So I have it on its own layer and I'll just simply just sign my name. That's how easy it is. It's that simple. Sign it with a pen. You might as well. Number three, shortcuts. Let's talk about shortcuts. There are all sorts of ways to get shortcuts. Matter of fact, I have a device in my hands called Quick Keys. This Quick Keys is actually really cool. You can kind of see it. I'll put it up here on my camera. You can see it there too. Um, it's, it's got eight keys on it and a dial. The dial is a physical dial. Um, so I can turn it and have it do things. Um, the actual eight keys on here, there's an OLED screen right in the middle here that tells me what each one of these keys is located and what they, what they do, what they stand for. And again, there's eight keys. There's also a set button at the bottom here. So what this allows me to do is I can press this button and it changes these keys to a whole new set. I have five sets I can have. So a total of 40 keys per application using this device. Now I've got a setup for a, a more portrait type of, of view here. I can very easily change in the settings to go to landscape where the dial's on this side or flip it over or even flip it this way. So I can actually set it up whatever way I want. I happen to like it like this with a dial on top. And again, it sits right next to my tablet, as you see up on screen there, and I can actually control everything very quick and easily with it. Let's talk a little bit about how we can go about doing that. I've made mention that I can create a macro or a series of keyboard strokes inside of Photoshop and record them. And put. you've been seeing me push my quick keys here on my tablet. Um, I've been pushing some buttons that how to do certain things. And you've been seeing me do that as I go along, but how did I get those into this? And let's talk about that real quick. Um, everything inside of Photoshop is how the capability of being able to set up as an action 
or a command or a keyboard shortcut. Matter of fact, all the tools over here have their own keyboard shortcut. If I pause over a tool long enough, it'll tell me that that's the letter S for the clone stamp tool or B for brush, J for um, healing brush. And you know, I can keep on going now. All these tools have a keyboard equivalent to go ahead and select them. So that's one way. There's also the ability, let's say example, I wanted to go back to this photograph here that we're looking at, I'll turn off my signature for a second. And I wanted to add a layer mask, but I want that layer mask that I can go ahead and make it a button on my quick keys. So let's talk about how to do that. There is no keyboard shortcut right off to be able to create that layer mask. I have to push the button there. You see, I just did that. I'm going to undo that. And I'm just going to simply come up and I'm going to go ahead and choose to do an action. I'm going to go ahead and record an action. So let's go ahead and create a new action. Here's my little action here. This is kind of Photoshop's macro capability, if you will, and it records what you do. So it's pretty simple to use. Um, I'll go ahead and hit that little button there and it's going to ask me for a name. Well, let's call this a layer mask. Layer mask. Now there's two ways to do a layer mask. I can reveal or I conceal um, the image. Reveal means white. Conceal means black, and that's what I can actually do there. So if I were to, let me cancel that for one second. I'll show you this again. If I were to create a layer mask and I wanted to reveal everything in my photograph, I just hit this button here and you can see my layer mask is white. Now, likewise, if I do that one more time, this time I'm gonna hold down the option key or the alt key on the, the Mac or the PC. I'm gonna hold those down and then I hit that button right here again and you'll see it'll fill with black. Now the photograph is still there. It's just being hidden because my layer mask is black. Now, if you were watching me, you may have seen me press a button on my pen. That's actually my option key on the Mac or my alt key on the PC inside of Photoshop. That gives me a lot of power. Every tool changes with that one particular key, the option key or the alt key. And so I drop it right here as one of my buttons on my pen so I can access it very quickly. So that's all I did. I press that button and then press down there for the layer mask to be able to get that. The top button is always undo. So I can very easily just hit undo and it goes back to its normal state. So that is the purpose of a layer mask. It either reveals or it conceals. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when I get to the next subject or the next reason. But let's talk about this real quick as far as shortcuts and how do I actually create a shortcut? So we're gonna go ahead and create again, a new layer mask, a new action. Here it is right here. It's asking us to name it. So we'll type in layer mask. And if I wanted to, I can come up here and I can put it somewhere in a set, but I, here's the key part. I can actually assign it a function key. So notice here's the function keys. And usually on your keyboard, you have an FN, which means you're gonna invoke one of those function keys. Let's give it 11. And I can do things like, notice that there's a couple of different sets here. So I have the F, the F key sets, I have the shift F key sets, and I have the command shift F key sets, as well as just the command key sets. So you got a lot of keys I can drop here, right? It gives me that capability. I wanna make sure I'm not duplicating it. So we'll go ahead and say, uh, F11, shift and command. Now I'm going to go ahead and record this. And all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to come down here and choose to add a layer mask and we'll stop it. Now that's it. It's done. Let me undo that layer mask. So it's gone. And anytime I want to, I just play that layer mask and there it is. It created it again. That's how simple it is to create an action. So it gives me the capability of of really of putting a keyboard equivalent to anything I want. Matter of fact, I could have even done uh, option on the Mac or alt on the PC and made it hide my photograph just as easily. So that's how easy it is to create a macro inside of Photoshop. And I just created a very simple one of a layer mask. You know, we can get more advanced if we want to. Matter of fact, if I revert this file real quick, we'll get a little bit more advanced. There's the original file. Let's zoom back out. And let's say example, let's trash that one for a second because I'm going to create a new one. Let's create a new one. And we're going to call it layer mask again. I'm going to call it black because we're going to make it black so that it hides it. 
or maybe I'll just call it layer mask hide. There we go. Again, we'll give it a F key. We'll do that same one, just so I'm using the same one there and hit record. Now I'm looking at my base image. So what I'm gonna actually do is let me do a couple different sequences here to create something to actually paint on with this, this paint my photograph onto. So I'm gonna to want a white canvas behind it and be able to paint on that image. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and record. We're going to select all. So I'll come up here and choose select all. Select all, there it is. He's doing command A. I'm also gonna take this layer, I'm gonna create a new layer with it. Well, before I do that, let's make sure I have black and white as my base colors. There's white, my background color is gonna be white. So I can come up here and go now new layer and I'll choose via cut. There's right there, via cut. So now I've just lifted it up. Now look over here at my, my layer palette. I've just taken that white layer. There it is right there. I lifted up the, my photograph and now I'll add in that layer mask. Again, I'm gonna take my pen and hold down that second button right there, which is gonna give me the capability of creating a black layer mask. Now, again, the photograph is there but it's being hidden by this layer mask and it's sitting on top of a white canvas. That's how easy it was to do. We'll stop recording. And again, we'll reset it. Reset my image. Okay, so there's my image. Now again, all I'm gonna do is just simply play what we had created. And I could type the keyboard equivalent. It would be, if I go to my keyboard, I could press FN, Shift, Command, and 11. Uh, there we go. And it just created it for me. So that's how easy it was to create this, this layer mask. And the reason why I do that is because I may want to have a little bit of fun with this photograph. I'm gonna zoom out just one step so you can see it real quick. And let's create a nice custom brush here. Um, I've got a br couple of brushes I wanna use. Let's use this one right here. Let's make it fairly large. Out there. And if I wanted to, anywhere I now paint with white, I'm going to be on this layer mask over here, the layer mask right here, I'm going to be bringing back in the photograph. You can see I can start to paint it in. And I can be as, as you know, come up here and paint it anywhere I want to just to kind of get it in there a little bit. So you can see I can, why I would maybe want to do this, kind of create a nice little painting of my photograph, give it some nice edging there, press a little bit lighter, get a little bit different edging there. Oop, let's talk about that in a minute, how I'm doing that. So, but you can see you can just really have a little bit of fun with this and just really kind of create a different effect very quick and easily by using custom brushes and creating this layer mask. So that's one of the reasons why I would do that. I create that layer mask. Now, again, we've set this up, remember, as a action, right? And that action has now a keyboard equivalent. Shift, Command, F11. On the window side, it is Shift, Control, F11. So let's go over to our control panel inside of the Sense Labs control panel. Here it is right here. And I've got these sets. Here's my, here's my buttons, those eight buttons that you see right there. And I've chosen Photoshop. See, I can choose really any application. Every application has the ability to have 40 keys that it can program. We'll go to Photoshop. Um, I've got a sketch. I've got a paint set. I've got a doc set, which creates my documents, um, my images. And there's, of course, I've got some other nice little things in there, like mask reveal and conceal. I've got brushes. So let's go ahead and go to a new set so we can just show you how this is easy to do. I'm going to turn it on. We'll enable set E. And of course, I could very easily come up and rename it to whatever I want, but we'll leave it alone for a second. I'm just going to go to this first button and we're going to go ahead and call it a keystroke. We are, these are all the things, by the way, you can do. So I've got keystrokes, modifiers. Modifiers are keys that actually change other keys. The tablet functions, navigation. I can launch an application if I wanted to. Oh, mouse clicks. So there are some capabilities of even putting in those mouse clicks if you wanted to have a racer function and even disable if I don't want to use that particular button. But we're going to use it as a keystroke. Let's go ahead and clear what's in there out. Delete both of those and clear this out. You do have to clear what's in there out. It'll just keep on adding to it. So we'll clear that out. All right. So do you remember the keyboard sequence we were just doing? It's uh, FN for the function keys, shift command and F11. 
and I pushed it way too many times. Doop, doop, there we go. So shift command F11, and that is, we'll give it a name, layer mask. Oh, hide layer mask. Now we'll do it that way, hide layer mask. There we go. And we'll go ahead and say, okay. And see, it says right there, hide layer mask. And if we go back into Photoshop, I will have, let's revert this image one more time. File, revert, there it is. And if I take a look at my quick keys, if you look up on camera there, you see my screen. I've got the quick keys here. I'm gonna change my set. Now I'm on the paint, now I'm on the dock. Now I'm on the brushes, next one should be set E, set E. And look at that hide layer mask, it's right there. You can see it right there, it says hide layer mask. So the OLED screen tells me what it is. So I'll just press that button and watch what happens inside of Photoshop. Automatically, it took my image, lifted up off the page, added a layer mask, remember we filled it with black, and now I can start painting in my photograph if I wanted to just as easily as we were doing before. So that's how easy it is to do this. I, I can do that with anything. It records whatever I'm doing, which is really kind of cool. So it gives me that capability and that's how I can use and create shortcuts. Again, 40 different sets or 40 different keys per application. I think you can have a maximum about 29 applications. I have not reached that yet, but basically you would use it for like, I use it for video as well too. So all sorts of fun things I can do with video editing. Um, using the dial here for jog shuttles is a lot of fun in video editing. I can also use this right now. I've got it set for my brush size so I can actually take it my brush size up or down on screen. You can see that happening and I'm just swinging my finger around. And if I change this, it's going to control zoom, zoom out, zoom in, press it again. I've got it set up so every other button is a brush size because I use that a lot. But I also have another button I changed it to for hard edge, soft edge. So if I grab a normal brush, and if I want to, you'll see the, up here in the corner, it'll show and it will also show in this window. So if I take and I now start rubbing my finger around, you can see I'm softening the edge of my brush just by using the dial on my quick keys. So it gives me a lot of control for that too. Um, so I can go from hard edge to soft edge and back and forth. So again, a lot of fun capabilities here just by using this one device to be able to create some really great capabilities and macros and shortcuts inside of Photoshop. Number two, pen pressure. That's a biggie. Some people thought it should be number one. Uh, it's close, it's close. Pen pressure does so much for you though inside of Photoshop, it's amazing. Matter of fact, let's talk a little bit about that and show you some good examples of how that comes into play. Let me show you a couple of things here and you'll understand why uh, there's another one that's actually probably more important than this. But this is really important. This is really great. Matter of fact, this is one of the main reasons why you would use a pen inside of Photoshop. And that is because what I can do, if I'm using a mouse, by the way, I'm gonna simulate using a mouse. I've, I've created a brush, it has no pressure controls. You'll see it right here, it's got no pressure controls. And I'm just kind of simulating this brush on my tablet. So a mouse, I click on or I click off, that's what a mouse does. But if I want to, maybe I want to control size. So I press down lightly, get a thin stroke, and as I increase pressure, it becomes thicker. Likewise, I can do things like, matter of fact, come up here and not only control size, but maybe I want to control opacity. So I start off very, very light gray, and as I increase pressure, it becomes more and more white. And I can even mix them. So if I wanted to say, start off light and thin, and press down harder, I get thicker and more wider as it goes along. So I can control all these settings. And that's kind of one of the things I can do inside of Photoshop. That's why pressure is so important. How would I use pressure? I'll show you a couple of quick examples of how I would use pressure inside of Photoshop. I've got this shot here of Sylvia. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, by the way, I take the front button of my pen and I make that be the space bar so I can navigate around very quick and easily. Uh, my second hand, which is right here, is actually just resting in my pocket. I'm very comfortable to be able to do this and move it around to where I need it to be. Um, looking at this particular photo, you'll see that I can do things like, as an example, look and say, okay, so Sylvia's got a couple things going on. I'm going to use the healing brush. And you can see I've got the healing brush right now. And what I would want, how I use the healing brush is you typically will make the brush the size of the area you're trying to fix. So in this case, I'd make it just slightly bigger. Like probably about right there, uh, right there. 
That's about the size I want to fix that spot there. But then when I moved over this tiny little spot above her eyebrow, I have to stop what I'm doing using a mouse, change that size down to a much smaller size. And then maybe I come up here and I have to make it big again. So I'm constantly with my fingers resting on the brackets, keys to be able to, be able to change those sizes up and down. Um, I don't have to do that. I don't have to worry about that at all. By using pin pressure, I can just have a brush example there. You see the size there. I was controlling the size of my brush so you saw it using my quick keys right there. But all I'm gonna do is just simply have it one set. And then when I go to an area that needs a lot of, of fixing, I'll press down hard. So I can press down hard and I get a big brush and get all that real quick. Maybe up here, do the same thing. But when I come to this area right here above that little tiny dot above her eyebrow, I just press down very, very lightly and I get a little tiny brush. So that's where pressure comes involved, becomes involved. I press down as lightly or heavily as I need to, to be able to navigate around and fix this image up. And like, like let's see, I want to take away her trademark moles. Don't tell her I did this, but you can see how quickly I did that. The smile line though, this little wrinkle right here, I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to press down very, very lightly and just go down the wrinkle like so. And you can see that I'm removing it. And I've got a really tiny brush as I move around. Even though I've got a big fat brush, I've got a little tiny brush to be able to do this. And I can just navigate around this area and fix a few things real quick. I know there's one more spot on our neck I want to fix. There we go. So you can see how quickly I can change my size of my brush as I press down. So more area I want to repair, I press down a little bit harder. Less area I want to repair, I press down a lot lighter. So as an example, just so you see it, let me go back up here and say revert. Here is the before. You can see what it was before. And then I'll just press my undo. And that's what we've done in just a few seconds. I can even take away the redness in her eye. Take that away too. Just bring that up here and just hit those spots real quick using the healing brush. She obviously stayed out way too late last night, the night before I took this. Um, so you can see how I can just, again, my pressure is controlled by that. So likewise, if I were to do something a little bit different here, I'm gonna take this shot here, one of the shots I took of a butterfly um, down in Butterfly World, and I'm gonna add a um, nice little another layer and uh, there, there is tools inside of Photoshop called Dodge and Burn. I don't like using those tools because they actually mix the original pixels. And I want to use a Dodge and Burn layer to be able to create my own Dodge and Burn area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just switch this real quick to my opacity brush. So now I'm controlling everything based off opacity. You can see here in the list here, you can see how it's being controlled there. Um, I do want to change it to a nice softer edge. So I'm going to change it real quick to a nice soft edge. There we go. Nice soft edge. And I do want black. I'm going to burn here a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a new layer. This new layer, instead of being a normal layer, I'm just going to simply change it to either overlay, which can be more dramatic, or soft light, which is what I'm going to use in this case. And I'm just going to start burning areas in. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make a bigger brush because I want to move around fast here. So I can press down hard to get areas darker or press down lighter to get some areas a little bit lighter. So I can just move around and just kind of darken and lighten it up. Now, if I was using a mouse to do this, what I would typically do is I would typically uh, change my setting up here to the flow uh, to about or the opacity to about 15, 20 percent and then constantly go over at the same exact area to get at the darkness I was after actually after here. Here you can see I'm just moving around and just depending on my pressure, bring my brush size down a little bit, depending on my pressure will determine how much ink I'm leaving on the screen here. Darken that leaf up a little bit. So here is what we have just done. Let's take a look real quick. Um, you can see that I've got some areas that I've pressed down hard got more burn effect there, press down a little bit lighter on the other areas and totally avoided other areas. And that's all being controlled by my pin pressure. So that's one again, another good reason why pin pressure is so important. So here we have the before and the after. I just kind of wanted that butterfly to stand out a lot more. And so you can see how easy that was to do just by turning that and turning that layer on to a soft light layer and painting on that particular layer. Number one.
Ergonomics, yeah. If you're using a mouse on the computer or a trackpad, that actually puts a lot of strain on your wrist and on the back of your hand here. Um, matter of fact, uh, sometimes you'll even feel it down in here. And these are all your nerves that are being affected and nerves don't heal, by the way. So there, there's no healing there with that. That's why people have carpal tunnel surgery is because they've damaged their nerves by doing that repetitive motion. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I made it number one is because it's very, very key and very important. This is a natural media device, something you've grown up with your whole life, drawing with a pencil, with a crayon, with a pen, um, and being able to even a paintbrush, you still hold everything the exact same way. And that's again, a natural media device, something you're naturally normally used to using and normally doing. And that's why this is so important to use a pen instead of a mouse. A mouse is, you even hold a mouse uncomfortably. Um, if you're using a trackpad, you're doing a lot of, of finger motion. And of course, that's again, putting a lot of strain right across the back of your hand with that muscle right there. So I've been using the pen tablet medium bundle special edition, it's white. All of our tablets come with two pens in the box. So you get this nice hard case as well. Nice hard case for taking your pen with you. And as you can see, there's two pins in here. There is also a dongle to be able to go from USB-A to USB-C, and then also wireless, which is mine's connected to my computer. That's why you're not seeing it right now. I'll show you another one in a second. All the nibs are right here. Um, and so you actually get two nib, two pins. Reason for two pins, uh, what if you lose one? You still are able to do some work. What if you prefer a thin pin over a thicker pin? or you prefer the thicker pen over a thin pen. So you get your two, two choices there. You can actually use either one and they work great. Um, the other thing is I'm using a bundle. So I also get the quick key remote. So that's another nice little addition there with that. And you also get all the cables and a nice carrying case that all fits into. So carrying case, you get the two pens and also the quick keys. And that is the special edition bundle. Here is the pen tablet medium in black. And the medium bundle has the quick keys as well. So you have the quick keys bundle. And again, all of our tablets have two pins in there. Um, and as well as a carrying case is always gonna come with it as well. The other one is the pen tablet small. Here's the small. And it's again, gonna give me the capability of using a small tablet and a small device. I just turned the lights on it. Should turn it on the other one as well. So I can have these lights on there. We'll talk about those. Those lights are a nice little addition to it. Um, you can see the, blue, the medium, I've got blue lights on that one right now. Um, and so the, the lights can actually be set up for applications, which is really kind of cool. So there's the small, again, everything comes with it, two pins, you get the carrying case. If you want to get the remote with the small, it is an additional. You could get the remote with a small in order to add that in. That's what you can get this separately, by the way, too. So the quick key remote can actually be sold separately. Sense Labs. Labs.